Welcome to the next in our series of videos on using the EV3 with Open Roberta. Uh, today we are going to show you how you can get a sensor to work and affect your program and have your program change as a result of it. All right, last lesson we just had a motor work uh, and then pause for a little while and then the motor stop. Uh, just a quick run through of the different sensors you have available to you. So you, this is a touch sensor All right. uh, and you can insert Lego into that, into that little hole. Uh, so it can basically have a stick standing out in front of your robot to detect touching a wall or something like that. Uh, you've got an ultrasonic sensor which is used to measure distance. It will give you a reading in centimeters. You have a color sensor uh, that will um, measure whatever color it's looking at. Uh, it works best when it's about one centimeter away from whatever object you're looking at. Uh, we've got a gyroscope that will measure movement, change of angle, and there's also a microphone, which I'm actually not sure if you can use with Open Roberta, but we'll check. All right, but for today, we're just going to use the touch sensor because I want to show you how the different control blocks work in Open Roberta. So I'm going to get my motor, uh, hook it up to my brick, into port B that we know and love. And I'll get my, get my touch sensor. And I'm going to plug that into port one. Like so. Now let's look at the computer. So the first thing I always do is I'll go to my advanced tab and I'm going to go to my lights and I'm going to get my green light out. And you can see here I'm already I'm logged in because that's icons blue and I'm already connected to my robot that icon is blue. All right, so there's three different ways of control that I'm going to quickly run through with you. The first is the wait until. And so basically this will, uh, our program will start at the start block and work our way down and pause at this block until whatever we put here is true. And then when that, when that is true, it'll move on to the next thing and so on and so on. So in the wait until, you can see here it's got a little blue bite mark out of it. That means it wants something to slot into that place to answer this question, what is it waiting until? And the light blue is down here in the logic. And we could grab these things down here. And these will return us a true or a false, which is basically what this is wanting. Uh, but I happen to know that if I look at my touch sensor, you notice that the edge of the touch sensor has a little light blue um, bit hanging off of it. Uh, and that is because this returns true or false. Either the touch sensor has been pressed or it isn't. Uh, each of the different sensors returns a different color. Notice this? So to get distance on the ultrasonic returns a dark blue, which is math, our numbers. That's because the ultrasonic returns a distance, so it returns a number. Get color from the color sensor returns a yellow bit, which down here, if we look, our colors, uh, the yellow tab is all of our colors. I can grab this straight away because I know that light blue fits into light blue. All right. So basically, I'm waiting until the touch sensor on port one is pressed. When that is true, this will move on. So when that is true, how about we get our motor and drive at 100 percent, and then we wait until it is true again. Notice here how there's another wait until with the touch sensor. This is basically a longer version of what I've already got here. It will work exactly the same. So get the touch sensor uh, from port one. Right? And if that's been pressed, then that's going to be true. And wait until true is equal to true. And then the whole thing will return true and will continue on. Right? But it's worth noting that there are the different kinds of equals that we can use. Uh, we have not equal to, so we've got less than, less than or equal to, greater than, greater than or equal to. So like these four will come in handy when you're using numbers for the ultrasonic sensor, for instance. Because uh, if the distance on the ultrasonic sensor is less than, say, 50 centimeters, then you might want to do something. Uh, same as here, this true, this can be changed for true or false. Uh, so this is actually going to behave exactly the same way, so I'll just leave that one in there to 
to prove that and then we will stop the motor okay and the motor is on port B turn the brick lights off and away we have it so the brick light will turn green we'll wait until we press the button we'll start up and then we'll wait until we let go of the button oh no this is saying wait until the button is true as well so it's going to start race through here start the motor and then detect that i'm still pressing the button because it's going to happen ask these two questions within a millisecond of each other and then stop the motor straight away so it's hardly going to turn at all and so if i look at it we don't even see it turn so i need to say i need this wait until to be for it to i could either say wait until it's not equal to true or I could say wait until it's equal to false. Or I could even say, just to confuse you again, in the logic, I could get a not and say, let's wait until the touch sensor is not true, right? Because it's true when it's been pressed. So when it's not tr true, that's what we're going to wait until. And that will actually work now. Yeah. Green light, wait, we're waiting until I press it. Now we're waiting until it's not being pressed. And then the program ends. But I can't press it again. And that's because in our program, we just started at the top and we worked our way down and we stopped. So what I want, so I can start pressing it again, is to be able to do a loop. And I'm gonna grab a repeat while. All right, so there's, there's several different kinds of loops. Now I could do a repeat indefinitely and see if you can work out what the problem with this would be. All right, what happens if I do that? But let's get the brick light out and put that at the end. All right. There is actually no way for this program to ever end, short of having to pull out the battery on the EV3. Okay, because we will wait until I'm pressing the sensor and then the motor will start. And then I'll wait until I'm not pressing the sensor and the motor will stop. And then it will loop back here. And it will just keep on looping and there's no way to quit the program. Okay. And trust me, once you've got a nice complicated robotic build, you don't want to have to be pulling out the battery all the time. So I'm not going to run this because that would be a pain. What I am going to use and what I would encourage you to use instead is repeat while. All right, so while, and you can see here, there's a light blue byte mark again, so it wants a true or false in there. And while that's, whatever that is, is true, we're gonna wait until we're pressing the sensor, turn on the motor, and then when we let go of the sensor, we're gonna stop the motor. So what can I put here? I've already, I'm already using my touch sensor, so I can't use it as a button to stop it. If I had a second touch sensor, I could, but I don't. Fortunately, there are other buttons already built into my EV3. On the front panel and I can check this, those as a sensor too all right in my sensors button here pressed all right so button enter which is the middle button and if I pull this down I can pick whether I want the up the down the left the right the escape or any button so I might use the escape button since that tends to mean stop or go backwards or you know cancel now, but if we look at this program, while the escape button is pressed, we're going to run our program. So if I was to hit play right now, and I'm not pressing the escape button, it's just going to abort out straight away. But I actually want to change this while to until. All right, so now I'm going to keep going through this whole loop and keep on doing it until I've hit the escape button. So now I should be able to press the my sensor as many times as I want. All right, so we've got our green lights. Okay, so that's working as I expect. Now, we're getting all our sensor readings and motor outputs going, happening on the screen in our green light, which will turn off as soon as I exit the program. So if I hit the escape button, why is that not working? 
Isn't that interesting? Uh, why wasn't that working? Let's take a look at our program. Uh, I was wait. I was stuck here. This was the block that was running, and so I was creating the escape button, but it wasn't looking at it because it was stuck on this waiting until I was pressing the sensor. So it was only when I was pressing the escape button and then hit the sensor what um, at the same time. Right? I hit the touch sensor, so it moved on to this block. Then I let go of the touch sensor and then moved on to this block, and then it came down and, and repeated and asked the question is the escape button being pressed? So we'll only look at this question when it comes back up to re-loop. And because I was stuck here, that's why I wasn't asking the question. So that's an important catch for you to be aware of. And it also brings up another interesting point, that this wait until is a little problematic because the whole program stops and is trapped on this block waiting until this thing happens. And we might want other things to happen in the meantime, for instance, we could have flashing lights going on, you know, turning on, turning off, turning on, turning off. We could have beeps. Um, we might want to be reading things from other sensors. So the wait until is generally not the way you're going to do this. And what you're going to do, put inside your repeat loop, is a decision. And we're going to use these if blocks. All right, so, and so here we're asking the question, if this Whatever we attach into the bite mark is true, then I'm going to do what I stick in this child block. Otherwise, it's just going to move on to the next thing. And so it won't hold up your program. So if I get my touch sensor, if I'm hitting the touch sensor, let's turn on the motor. Now, there's, see the little plus sign here? I can actually add to this, else, the touch sensor is not being pressed, then I want to stop the motor. All right, and this will now work in exactly the same way, except that it will now be able to listen for my the escape button being pressed at any time, because this if doesn't hold up the works. Now notice that I don't have to press uh, the touch sensor while holding down the escape button. The escape button just works straight away. Uh, that's because if this is not true, it just moves on, asks itself the next question. Else, so here it's saying else if this is not if this is true, then do this. Now, one important thing to also note about what I did here, I didn't do it this way. Right. I didn't make it a separate if block. Now the difference between else if and ifs, let me just quickly go through this. If this is true, it will run this and then exit the if block. If this is false, then it will ask, otherwise, is this thing true? Then do this, and so on. Whereas by having this if as a separate block, it will always ask this question. It's a little pedantic, but it is, it's basically a question of, do you want, do you want this if question to only run if this first question was false? And if the, if the answer to that is yes, then you do it using an else if, otherwise you can do it as a separate if in a way matter. All right, so in this case, if it's been pressed, then the, the, it, we're gonna power on the motor, and if it's not been pressed, we're gonna stop the motor, that's fine. Thanks for watching, I hope you found that helpful.